Um, where's Jordan who gave the last talk? Put your hand up. He talked for like 40 minutes with no notes. That's pretty mental. So, can we just have a round of applause for Jordan? Is that all right? Thank you. I've got notes, like quite a lot of notes, because this talk's already bad enough without me forgetting half of it. So, And also, the um, Yorkshire Digital guys, where are they? Yeah, can we give those guys a follow and uh, YorkshireDigital.com? I think it is. They've got a lot of good stuff to do. So, those guys as well. Boo. So, um, when I decided I was going to do this talk, I didn't really know what to talk about. I kind of, I didn't want to give advice because my advice is generally not very good and our insurance doesn't cover it. So, if it's okay with you, I'm just kind of going to tell a bit of a story that happened to me recently and it kind of fundamentally changed the way that I approach my work and my workflow. So, um, first of all, I'll just tell you a little bit about me. Um, I'm Lee. I'm a design director at a company called Ask you Brook, which is based in Scarborough, which, of course, looks like this every morning. Um, and more recently, we opened up a small second office in uh, Malibon in London, which is very different, looks an awful lot like this. Um, I have two design heroes. Uh, one is this man, who, if you are designers in the room, you might recognize this is a man called Henry Henry. And, um, he designed, I think he died like in the 1980s, but he designed from early 90, uh, about 1960 up until about 1990. He's a great man, you should check him out. The other one is this man. Some of you might not know this man. This is a man called Joel Bauer. Okay, If you don't know this guy, I urge you to kind of write that down and Google it when you get home. Especially his video. He has a 40 minute video on how to pack a travel suitcase and uh, it's quite incredible. So you should check that out. Um, the story I want to tell, I was at a friend's house about a month ago and it was a dinner party. It was all very middle class. We had drinks and nibbles and arguments about the Guardian. And we had the, uh, the kind of ubiquitous background um, dinner party music, which is, um, incidentally, I think it's kind of getting a bit cooler now that we are becoming the generation that are hosting dinner parties. And uh, the first song that was played, I'm sorry, this is just me rambling on about a boring story. The first song that was played was this one, and then the second one was this one, and the third one was this one, and the fourth one was this one. And of course, these are all songs by this band, who of course are a great band. And I just assumed that this was um, a Spotify playlist, or it'd gone to Spotify and it hit shuffle play on the top tracks and this is what had come out. So the dinner party went on and I left a little bit later than I should and I decided to walk home and I pulled out my iPod and I had Radiohead in my head. So I pulled out Spotify and I put it on and I found out that it wasn't actually a Spotify playlist, it was this, the best of Radiohead. And I, I, I listened to the best of Radiohead on the way home and it was great and I really enjoyed it. But I had them in my head and I went to work the next day and I put them on and I went through the Benz and OK Computer and Kid A. And one of the things I realised when I got to the end of listening to these albums was that these albums were orders of magnitude better than the best of album I'd just been listening to. And I thought, well, that can't be right because this is a best of album. It's, this is all the songs you recognise. It's right on the front cover. It says this is the best of this band. And that kind of got me thinking, this is a bit strange because they've pulled out all of the best bits of their career, collated them into one thing, and they've ended up with this. And this isn't as good as the projects that they've done before. And that kind of got me thinking, does that apply to anything that I do? in my working life? Does it apply to um, people in general? And I kind of realized that, yeah, it does. It does apply to what I do. And I had a, a kind of a, a weird, stark realization. And I, I spoke to some other designers that I know and that I work with, and I found that I kind of wasn't alone in this. Designers kind of have this odd default state where if, you, if you're busy and you're under pressure, you find something that you do, and you find something that you do well, and then you do it again. That's kind of our default state, and that's really dangerous, because I found myself, I looked back across a whole history of projects that I'd had from right when I first started to right up to now, and what I found was that every project that I'd worked on had almost, without fail, 
followed on from the projects I'd worked on before. So what I was doing was I was learning something, applying it to a project, and then I was learning something else and applying that to a project. And when I got to the end, everything I'd ever learned in 15 years was in this project. And I kind of thought, well, is this, is this just me refining my style? This is because obviously all designers do this. All designers have a style, and is this me refining it? Or is this something worse than that? Is this me creating a best of on every project that I do? And from what we've seen, obviously best ofs aren't as good as their individual projects. And it's not just me that recognizes this. If you look at um, sites like Metacritic, the best of albums for bands are always lower than their individual projects. And this shouldn't be right because it's got all of their best ofs on. So this got me slightly worried as a designer. And it made me reassess how I work and fundamentally think about how I approach projects. So if you think you might be one of those people who work in that way, that way might work for you. But if you think that might be how you work, it might be worth going back and slightly reassessing your workflow and saying, am I creating a best of here, which might not actually be the best for this individual project. And I came up, if you find that is you, I came up with just a few tips which actually helped me. These are the way that I kind of got myself out of that circle. The first one was not to use all projects as a reference point. It's quite hard when you're busy, when you're a busy designer, when you're working on multiple projects, you've always got that most recent project in your head. That's the one you're geared towards working on. And then it takes you kind of two weeks of a new project to get geared towards working towards that project. Oh, that's what I found. And when I looked back across these old projects, I kind of realized, yeah, what I am doing here is I'm not letting go of this project when I get to this project. And that's kind of ending up with me picking parts out of old projects and putting them in new projects, which really I shouldn't be doing. So the first one would be don't use old projects as a reference point. The second one is being mindful of inspiration. I mean, we all search for inspiration as designers. We all go across the sites we all know, and we all research the sector. And you might find good work on that sector, but it's too easy to get tied into trends. And what happens when you get tied into those trends is you're essentially finding what's right at the moment. And then you'll find that that's very close to the project you were working on last time. And it may not be right for this particular project. I hope that makes sense. And the third one is to take a step away from what you're working on and to do that often. I think I don't think we do this enough. It's, it's talking to a lot of designers that I know. I found it very strange that I think we have this weird kind of default state as designers. We have a kind of bank of things that we've worked on previously and a bank of things that we know work well on other projects. And when we get too close to a project, every little minute detail of that project starts to annoy you if you've worked on it for too long. If you've sat, done nothing but sit in front of it for six weeks, every single detail annoys you and you start to question what you're doing. If you actually step away from that project, for it may have, it only be a day, and then you come back to that project you kind of realize that the decisions you were making maybe were the right decisions. But if you don't take that step away, I found for me personally, I start to get annoyed. And when I get annoyed, I default back to the stuff that I liked before. So I end up every single project getting annoyed and looking the same over and over and over again. And that I kind of got a bit, little bit further than that. I thought, well, why do we do this? Now, I think this is one of the main reasons why we do it. I can't really read that. I didn't know it was going to be this far away. But it says, a brand level imagery visualizes the forever brand message through a sense of time and captured personal moments. That is qualifying something that you didn't really need to qualify, I think. That's over qualifying something. And I think as designers, we kind of, we feel this need to qualify every single thing that we do. And I think the more you focus on qualifying and the more you focus on having to explain why you've done something the way you've done it, the less you focus on what's really important, and that's what I believe is the designer's instinct. I think it's fine to be a designer. When, when somebody asks you the question, why is that blue? Personally, I think it's fine to say, because it looks nice. Not because of this. I don't think everything has to be qualified. And I think that is one of the main reasons 
um, why we find ourselves in a position of always, always kind of going back off. Oh, to me personally, you may not work like this, but I personally found myself defaulting back to the same often typography I'd worked on a project, three projects before, or colour that I'd worked on for a project before. And it's, I think I realise it's because I find those things easy to qualify with clients. I'd done it before, I know it works, and I was, and I was in a position where I could say to the client, I've done this because of X, Y, and Z. And I think qualify, over qualifying things is one of the reasons why we got to that point. Um, I didn't know how long we had to talk for, so I've kind of cut it off at that point. Um, if you want to talk to me about it further, which you probably don't, um, that's who I am on Twitter, so you can follow me there. And uh, thank you to Josh for letting me ramble on 15 minutes, and thank you.